皆さん大変ながらくお待たせいたしました。Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for waiting. And today, a、uh, transgender session,、uh, special webinar on、uh, transgender ethnic held by Pride House Tokyo and also the Embassy of Netherlands.、Uh, before the session starts, I would like to share、uh, how to use uh, this uh, webinar. And this session is held、uh, by Japanese and English. So you can enjoy simultaneous translation service. If we want to listen the Japanese translation,、uh, please select Japanese language from、uh, translation icon. If you want to listen、uh, English translation, please select uh, English uh, language. Please select either language. You can change the language as you need. And also,、uh, if you select the mute, the original、uh, voice, then、uh, you can listen only a translator's、uh, voice. So, also, we have a sign language translator.、Uh, this is only for Japanese.、Uh, next. Uh, I would like to explain、uh, question and answer function. In the right bottom of the screen,、uh, there is a QA icon. So, through this、uh, QA box, we、uh, entertain all questions, but due to the time limitation, we may not answer to all questions. And this webinar is recorded. Thank you for your understanding. So, we would like to start the session. Matsunaka san, please. I'm Don Matsunaka. I'm the president of Pride House Tokyo. I thank you very much、um, for participating in this、uh, webinar. So, whilst、uh, there are so many online sessions available to us, we may not be able to start、um, this kind of event straight away. And then I trust that、uh, you have been really wondering what's going to happen. But、uh, this time, We have、um, started、uh, this particular special webinar together with the Embassy of the Kingdom of the Netherlands on the inclusion of openly transgender athletes in sports event. And also, up until say half past、uh, 20, yes, we'll have this main session. And、uh, right after that, we will have a participant from the United States.、Uh, Even though sort of,、uh, this announcement has been made uh, very say, uh, prior to this、uh, event. So, for myself, I'd like to explain to you、um, about who we are, Pride House Tokyo Consortium. Actually, say, I started out uh, say, at the time of the Vancouver Olympic Games in say, 2002, and then in sports. Uh, apparently, sort of,、um, this,、uh, for instance, prejudice against this、uh, LGBTQ、uh, is said to be really severe. So, in order to say, gain rights,、um, say, knowledge, and to disseminate、uh, such information say, in a correct manner, we started out、um, say, our activities. And also, this、uh, Pride House,、uh, which has stemmed from say, local organizations. But、uh, say with this、uh, Tokyo 2020 Olympics and the Paralympics,、uh, we really wanted to establish ourselves. And also, say 2010, actually in Harajuku, we actually opened some forums, say for 10 days. And that's the last、uh, year for five months in Shinjuku, a part of Tokyo. We really wanted to say have this venue where so we would be able to say be active and、uh, leveraging those.、Um, Information、uh, we have gained and experiences that we have gained, we really wanted to say、um, open up ourselves、uh, as a kind of hop, step, and jump.、Um, however, said、so、last year,、um, due to the COVID 19, actually, sort of this、uh, 2020 Olympic Games and Paralympic Games、um, have been postponed to this year. And、uh, even though sort of、uh, that was、uh, the case, but still. 
we really wanted to sort of have ourselves established and for the sake of the use. Um, and so we conducted a survey targeting about uh, 1,600 sort of uh, people. Uh, about 40% of those um, really wanted it. Um, to mention that uh, they were actually sort of uh, having no place uh, where they could actually sort of uh, talk about uh, their agenda identity, for instance. And I probably sort of, for instance, that they really had to say, um, stay home for a long time, just like everyone else in the society. So uh, we really wanted to sort of establish ourselves and to disseminate uh, information on, say, uh, such uh, things, uh, which I have mentioned, uh, say, way um, before the, I uh, say, Tokyo Olympic Games and the Paralympic Games. And we really wanted to sort of utilize uh, this venue, um, thanks to the MC, uh, for this uh, particular, say, sports uh, special, say, webinar. And uh, probably there is a, say, archive uh, with about 1,000, say, um, 500 literature or books available um, in a very woody type of environment uh, with all sorts of uh, clear glasses all around. So this is where I say we would like to um, have this special webinar and this particular place um, does have um, all sorts of functions available as well. For instance, so with some cafe space and right here there are some tables available as well. So you can read books while enjoying some drinks uh, to feel very secure there and also wrap around support is something we started out on this um, say June so LGBTQ under say 24 including those who are say LGBTQ or who believe that they might be LGBTQ and could come down here just to receive some consultation on sort of themselves. Even though sort of uh, it's uh, uh, relatively limited in terms of the space available, uh, you can come down to this kind of place. And also at the time of this um, say Olympics and Paralympics, uh, we sometimes actually sort of run those uh, videos um, um, of the athletes actually who actually participated in the games and also for instance have this kind of um, say uh, events and apart from myself uh, there are two um, people from uh, the pride house tokyo consortiums so we are actually sort of uh, engaged in say eight different say um, activities and uh, we have actually sort of a, a consortium and uh, sort of uh, with the athletes uh, team the aya noguchi uh, so we will be actually so talking to right after me the other day at the uh, say pride house tokyo consortium we actually sort of uh, issued a statement um say on the participation of transgender athletes in the tokyo um say 2020 olympic and paralympic games and uh, this is the very set of uh, uh, first uh, games so uh, where those um actually athletes or transgender athletes uh, who identify themselves as transgender athletes and uh, could participate in. So we'd like to actually sort of take over to Aki uh, Noguchi. Matsunaka-san, thank you very much. I am a director of the state team. I am Aya Noguchi. And as Matsunaka-san said, uh, Tuesday of July 13th, the Pride House Tokyo uh, issued a statement, so I would like to read out uh, that statement. So uh, let me share the screen. So uh, let me read out. So uh, Pride House Tokyo statement on the participation of transgender athletes in the Tokyo 2020 Olympic and Paralympic Games. The Tokyo 2020 Olympic and Paralympic Games uh, will be the first time in the history of the Games that athletes who identify as transgender uh, will be able to compete in the gender category in which they self-identify. 
the Olympic uh, Charter, uh, which upholds respect for all human rights, defines the fundamentals of Olympians as follows. The practice of sport is a human right. Every individual must have the possibility of practicing sport without discrimination of any kind and in the Olympic spirit. In a sporting culture where people are distinguished by their assigned sex at birth, transgender athletes have previously been prevented from participating in competitions based on uh, their gender identity and have struggled with conflicts with their own identity and exclusion. It is therefore extremely gratifying for those transgender athletes to be able to compete in a category they identify with. We believe that these games will be a milestone in bringing us one step closer to a inclusive sporting environment where no one is left behind. However, media so, uh, in the IOC instituted a policy that allows transgender athletes who met certain conditions to compete in the gender category of their choice. And however, media coverage on this subject has been a mixed bag. In particular, there has been a lot of a controversy about the fairness of the transgender female athletes competing in the female category. Yet, uh, the evidence that uh, transgender female uh, athletes have a guaranteed superiority to cisgender female athletes in the field of sports is in inconclusive. So uh, it is thus of utmost importance uh, for the future development of the sport to deepen the dialogue with factual and accurate knowledge on true equity in an environment where no one is excluded and all included. For this reason, further dialogue and efforts by experts, as needs and other concerned parties are required. And we welcome the opportunity that the existence of the Olympic and Paralympic Games itself provides to expand such opportunities. Nevertheless, uh, even though the transgender athletes meet the current International Olympic Committee requirements and are eligible to compete, we have recorded many instances where individual athletes have been disparaged. The Tokyo Metropolitan Government's ordinance, which prohibits discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity, may serve as deterrent against slander against individual transgender athletes. But municipalities that do not have such an ordinance are of course not covered by it. We need to be very careful not to encourage prejudice and discrimination against transgender people living in Japan by spending uh, denigrating discourses. For this reason, we would be grateful if the media could cooperate in the dissemination of positive information based on accurate facts and free from human rights violations in accordance with the fundamental principle of the Olympic Charter, which states that no discrimination of any kind of shall be uh, to tolerated. We also hope that individuals using the internet and social media will understand the seriousness of the issue faced by transgender people, whether they are openly transgender or not, and the complexity of the matter, and keep the messages that are respectful and they are mindful of how to create a society where everyone can live in peace. We hope that we can all reaffirm the spirit of the Olympic Charter, which states that all people should be given equal opportunity to play sports without discrimination of any kind, regardless of their sexual orientation or gender identity, and that the games will be a celebration of an inclusive sports culture that does not exclude anyone and promotes positive change in society. Uh, July 13th, 2021, on behalf of all uh, members of Pride House Tokyo Consortium. So uh, this is the statement we issued on uh, July 13th. That's all from my side. Thank you. Hi. Matsunaka Matsunaka. Thank you very much, Noguchi-san. Later on, we will ask Noguchi-san to participate in a say, brief um, say, session. But before then, 
two personals uh, should be introduced to you. So this from this uh, volunteer team for this uh, special say um, particular say event. Uh, Sugiyama san is uh, with us today, so we might like to ask her to introduce herself and uh, um, say uh, receive um, say some comments actually on the athletes participating in the set of games. This thing was, yes, everyone, hello. Yes, I'm you know, Sugiyama in charge of uh, this particular say event, and I must say a trans uh, agenda person uh, who used to be say a member of the women's uh, national fencing team. And also, I'm say also um, say running this uh, uh, say um, Tokyo say house, and also became the um, director for the say say um, C as well as is the executive board member. So I'd like to mention some um, based upon whatever sort of I have experienced. I say transgender say um, say personnel. Now, the Olympic Games we're just about to have is where, say, those transgender athletes can participate in as well. So that's wonderful. Say, ten, between, say, 10 years and uh, 25 years of age, I was participating in this uh, women's uh, national fencing team. At the time, so that there was no information at all on the LGBTQ at all. But uh, whenever, say, say, I sort of uh, felt um, that uh, I couldn't possibly sort of uh, go on if I really wanted to feel uh, as myself. But uh, say, having say um, the joy actually say in sports as if they um, athlete and also as an individual, um, I was not able to say keep on going. So just looking back at the time, so I think it's just a wonderful thing, and it's uh, very pleasing to know that the transgender, say, athletes can participate in the games uh, as them, themselves. So, uh, just say the banning of the discrimination against the transgender, say, personnel, and also ensuring uh, this kind of uh, say, opportunity for everyone to participate um, in the games um, so are very important. So, no one should be discriminated against. So how to say have both is something sort of causing some controversial, um, say, discussions. But uh, participating in these uh, competitions, of course, um, cause uh, these um, arguments and uh, controversial things. But uh, those rules are set out by the IOC did not start it out, uh, say, yesterday. Actually, I'm um, spending so long, actually, I'm um, going through all sorts of discussions and debates. Uh, actually, um, they came to have uh, the current rules. Of course, having a very constructive, say, discussion will be fine in order to be able to sort of have such rules set up and abide by those uh, rules. But I personally believe that say, no one should be dis disparaged. So, being or having a equity actually on the gender uh, means what? That is something that I'd like to raise as a question. Of course, uh, in the society, there are all sorts of say inequalities. Of course, like uh, for instance, uh, those athletes um, in a very say wealthy country uh, with full of equipment uh, to work on, and also those um, from very poor say countries actually with no equipment at all to be able to say play um, say out uh, with. But um, for instance, uh, there are great differences. Now, I'm actually 160 centimeters in my height. Uh, uh, while this uh, Polish, uh, say, athlete uh, who was 190 centimeters uh, in height, uh, there is such a great difference uh, between the two of us that this competition is not held just because of the differences in height. And also, uh, say, regardless of what kind of nationalities or, say, countries you may come from, you go on and participate in the competitions, right? So trans, um, say, uh, women or transgender issues. Of course, uh, those 
not just on those uh, issues, um, but also other issues related to those, including, say, what the trans uh, really means um, should be thought out about as well. For instance, sometimes uh, we may say and discuss that it's not actually sort of fair uh, sort of um, between those uh, transgender personnel and sort of a non transgender personnel uh, compete against each other. And then, sort of, um, of course, uh, now, for instance, uh, say being a transgender person, like a trans woman, and also, for instance, uh, who is not really a uh, a person who is really well recognized because of um, and the sex um, actually should be really sort of um, you know considered here, um, particularly when it comes down to whether that person or that kind of issue is really um, say uh, good to be discussed about or not. Of course, the sports and the society are not anything to be disconnected between those. For instance, um, in classroom, those uh, who are uh, very sort of uh, good at, say, sports are really sort of popular in the uh, classrooms, right? And also they may be able to um, go on to the, say, higher, say, um, say, writers in the society. And they may be able to say, uh, go on to a higher education and they may receive, uh, say, great employment. But then say, if you are discriminated or excluded some from sports, you may end up being say this group, this um, excluded actually from the society as well. That is something you may wonder about. But of course, uh, through the sports, uh, maybe trying to say, um, gain, say, peace in the say, society and also in the world. That, that is something sort of very important. So, uh, for instance, uh, diversity um, and also, for instance, say, uh, having a cooperative manner sort of uh, are the main things of the uh, themes of the Tokyo Olympic and Paralympic Games. So please try to say lead uh, this kind of say, opportunity to be a more positive sort of a thing. That would be great if we could make it that way. This is uh, Matsunaka again. Sugiyama-san, thank you very much uh, for your comments. So on top of that, uh, Noguchi-san should be joining as well. And uh, from myself, Matsunaka, I'd like to raise uh, the questions uh, to both of you. First, uh, say uh, Noguchi-san, you have been practicing sports, right? Regarding the participation by the transgender say, athletes while you were playing, uh, did you have any thoughts about those? And also this time, sort of, uh, you have created sort of this statement as a main person to work on that. Did you have any thoughts on uh, yourself by uh, regarding those as well? Yes, uh, this is Noguchi. Thank you very much for your questions. I have been playing, say, football and of course, among, say, my friends, uh, there were a lot of uh, transgender, say, uh, say, players. So I felt very close to them. Of course, uh, some of them actually sort of uh, really were um, actually sort of uh, thinking that they were, say, males, but just because of the restrictions sort of uh, seeing in the field of the football, uh, there were so many people who were not able to say keep on going as uh, such, uh, for instance, male athletes. So what I thought uh, should be uh, most uh, say important uh, is in this, uh, for instance, uh, inclusivity because uh, say cisgender say women and cisgender men were divided into two sexes um, but then now sort of uh, we have uh, transgender personnel or athletes so while having those uh, three categories uh, how can we ensure say fairness or equity that is why I thought about, uh, say, wanting to, say, describe something and 
Those um, athletes really sort of uh, made great efforts and uh, went through a lot of things. And even though that may be the case, uh, some of them were disparaged. That is why sort of uh, I wrote um, something related to that in my statement. This is uh, Matsunaka. Thank you very much, Noguchi-san. And then I'd like to ask uh, Sugiyama-san as well. So uh, Sugiyama-san, uh, you are a transgender man. And so uh, there are different types of uh, transgenders. And this time, for the first time in Olympic history, Roland Hubbard from uh, New Zealand, who is the uh, weightlifting athlete, uh, who is the transgender woman. So in the uh, sports world, transgender men and the transgender women uh, positions, are there any differences between the two? Thank you, this is Sugiyama. Well, transgender women uh, tend to draw uh, attention, but transgender men uh, don't uh, draw the attention, not very much. So this is... え、まあ、so, Fumi, are you a male? And then, sort of, uh, I was able to participate in that um, Asher game, sort of, uh, as a male. But of course, that kind of gender identity was uh, actually respected very much. That is why I felt pleased. But uh, in terms of the body strength, apparently, sort of, females are believed to be, say, positioned in a lower position than in the other sort of case. But and of course, uh, sometimes some people talk about um, that uh, kind of thing just uh, as an image alone. But of course, for instance, uh, you, when you have some males, some, some of them may have smaller, say, uh, body um, in size, right? So that kind of uh, image is something sort of people tend to harm. And uh, so trans uh, males, like regarding those, people do not talk about them much. And, and, and they may just say simply, well, if they do sort of, um, you know, well, that'd be fine. But then, of course, uh, some people may just uh, criticize uh, some of those transgender personnel, uh, say, uh, when they are not really in, uh, say, um, confidence situations. Yes, uh, this is Matsunaka again. Thank you very much. And so Sugiyama-san sort of, um, you mentioned that the images uh, may just, um, you know, go ahead, right? So in the actually, for instance, the national diet as well, uh, there was a movement uh, who we were talking about um, uh, this kind of movement should be made move forward. However, there were some people who were um, saying, saying something uh, discriminatory against those people and I probably say uh, there were some parliamentarians at National Diet members here in Japan who um, actually sort of well were saying that uh, they were rather sort of regarded sort of not correctly. But as I uh, read the uh, overseas literature, there is no such a case. So. Uh, not uh, all uh, transgender uh, women uh, won the uh, medals. Uh, there are many, many cases that cisgender women uh, win the medal. So there is no uh, guaranteed the superiority. This is Matsunaka. Thank you very much. So uh, with regard to the participation of the transgender athletes, uh, this is the first time in the history of the uh, Olympic uh, history. So the open transgender athletes uh, participate in the games. So uh, I am really uh, grateful and I think we have to celebrate that. 
I hope that uh, more people uh, would uh, think about that and the dialogue about that. And uh, through the Tokyo 2020, we want to uh, generate such culture. Uh, thank you very much. Sugiyama-san and Noguchi-san. And after this, uh, we will have uh, a Netherland, uh, Embassy of Netherlands session. So thank you very much. Yes, again, Matsunaka would like to serve as an MC and so as a co um, say host from the Embassy of the Kingdom of the Netherlands, uh, we would like to invite uh, His Excellency Peter van der Fleet, Ambassador of the Kingdom of the Netherlands to Japan, to give us this message. Hello everyone, my name is Peter van der Vliet, uh, Ambassador of the Kingdom of the Netherlands to Japan. Thank you for your participation in this special online event in collaboration with Pride House Tokyo on the eve of the Tokyo Olympics and Paralympics. Promoting equal rights for LGBTI is a priority of the Dutch government. For the simple reason that everyone should be able to freely express their individuality whether it is at home, at school, in the workplace, or in sports. As a matter of fact, to increase inclusivity in sports and to promote a safe sporting environment, the National Olympic Committee of the Netherlands, together with Dutch sports federations, published a guidance on gender and sex diverse individuals this year. This guidance is aimed at sports federations clubs and athletes to raise awareness and to ensure a safe place that includes everyone, regardless of who they are. The Olympic Charter states that, and I quote, the practice of sport is a human right. Every individual must have the possibility of practicing sport without discrimination of any kind and in the Olympic spirit, which requires mutual understanding with a spirit of friendship, solidarity, and fair play." End of quote. And in that spirit, we are here today. That is why we join forces with our local partners, such as Pride House Tokyo, when the whole world is watching Japan to work towards the goal of an inclusive society, also when doing sports together. I sincerely hope that the Tokyo Olympics and Paralympics will be a catalyst in the acceptation of LGBTI individuals in Japan. This event is surely a good step in that direction. Thank you very much. Hi, Matsunaka. This is Matsunaka. So uh, we have a message from uh, Ambassador. Uh, Peter van der Fleet. So uh, there was a discussion on the uh, uh, Netherlands Olympic uh, Committee. Uh, I think you may have heard the name of the JOC and also the Tokyo Olympic Committee. So in case of the Tokyo 2020, there is the IOC, International Olympic Committee, and also the JOC, and also the uh, Tokyo actually is the party uh, who, which signed uh, the contract of holding uh, Olympic Games and Paralympic Games. And the Tokyo 2020 is the organization which hold organize the uh, games. And the uh, NOC and also the uh, Netherlands uh, Sports uh, Federation uh, will uh, address uh, this uh, particular subject uh, from now on. So uh, to uh, set up the guidance, uh, we have uh, one person who was involved to uh, develop the guidance. And the announcement, uh, the name was uh, Tom, but that was his nickname. And his real name is uh, Emerys. And uh, Emerys uh, is joining us today. 
So I would like him to uh, self-introduction and also share his background and also the activities. So Emrys, the uh, floor is yours. Hello, I am Emrys Kaldas. I am 22 years old. I was born and raised in Amsterdam and um, I'm currently a student of geology. I uh, also have a bachelor's in English literature, so that's sort of what I do in my everyday life. Uh, I'm also a corporal player and a runner, um, and I would like to explain to you why the guidance was drafted, what is in it, and what my involvement in that was through taking you on a sort of short journey across my life. So I will start with my first experience with sports, uh, which was as a kid, um, lived close to Corporal Field, and I looked at that, I was like, oh, I would like, love to do that. But because I live in a country with a lot of water, my parents wanted me to learn how to swim. Uh, so they basically tricked me into learning how to swim because I first needed to learn that, and then I could join the Corporal Club. Um, and from that moment on, I sort of fell in love with the sport. However, I was, um, I completely forgot to mention this, but when I was born, I was assigned female. Um, so I grew up as a girl and I came out later in life um, and started living my life as the man that I am. Um, but corporal is a mixed gender sport. There are four men and four women on the team. Uh, it's not Olympic, maybe will never be, might at some point become Olympic. But it meant that I did not have aspirations to become an Olympian myself because the sport that I had chosen um, didn't really align with dreams like that. Um, but I still looked at the people who were playing the sport at a high level um, because I wanted to be like them. And I was looking at both the men and the women because there was something in both of them that I recognized. There was someone at my club who was very good who was approximately the height that I am now, which is 165, so quite small. Um, but I also looked at the tenacity of the men that I was also mirroring in some ways. Um, I, I played corporal for quite a while and the gender stuff intersected with that as well. Because when I was a small child, when I just joined the club, when I was seven or eight, we didn't have enough boys on the team to properly play the competitions. So we were asked to wear a bib uh, as girls, or some of us were asked to wear a bib to pretend we were boys and then we would play as a boy. Uh, and I was very often asked to do that by my coach and it felt very bright. It felt exhilarating in a way that it didn't to some of the other people on my team who were also asked to do that. Um, and I've started to realize that the way that I experienced gender wasn't the same as some other people in my life. Uh, but I didn't really figure it out what, what that meant until I was 14, 15, when I encountered the term transgender. And I started to figure out that the way that I had been told what trans people were wasn't completely the same as what we are in reality because this idea that you have a very masculine person and that is the only type of man you can be a very feminine person and it's the only type of woman you can be didn't align with the reality of everyone sort of existing on this gender spectrum together um but then there was some kind of issue with this fact that i realized that i wasn't identifying as a girl or as a woman anymore because I was playing a very binary sport. Even though it was mixed, it, there were very rigid roles for men and women, how you play, how you attack, how you defend. So the sport itself was actually also causing some gender troubles. In addition to the fact that I had been running around at that club since I was a very small child. So everyone knew who I was. Then again, there's also, we were asked to wear a specific uniform because whenever you play a team sport, you need to recognize who is on which team. And the girls are, and women in Corfu are often asked to wear a skirt, uh, like the sort of tennis skirts that you see um, in the Olympics as well. Um, and it started to become more and more uncomfortable to put it on. It had been a sort of role I had taken and accepted 
every time I prepared for a match. Um, but it became more and more difficult to force myself into that role. Every time I was addressed as one of the ladies on the team, it felt very uncomfortable. And the dressing rooms had never been a place where I felt very safe, even though I didn't understand why, because my teammates were very nice to me. Um, they were kind people, and they accepted the fact that I was slightly different from them from the get-go. But still, there was something wrong with being in a dressing room full of women, because it didn't feel like I belonged there. Um, and as this sort of idea of being trans and realizing that I didn't fit with this idea of womanhood dawned on me, it started to become almost impossible. I found an, another mixed gender sport that is very obscure. Most people don't know it because they only know the fictional version, but I found Quidditch, uh, which is a mixed gender sport where people are um, not sorted into a gender category by their passports or their birth certificates, but rather are asked to self-identify. Are you a man? Are you a woman? Are you non-binary? Well, that's the gender you play as. And I found a very queer team. There was almost no one on my team who was cisgender and straight. And it was the first time in my life that I encountered real LGBT, openly LGBT people who I could identify with. I found role models and I found role models in sport. We weren't necessarily very good, even though we participated in international competitions. We weren't very good, but it was the first time in my life where I had a community that I felt like accepted me for who I was, even though I hadn't fully figured it out myself yet. Um, I was asked to join the national team and it was exhilarating, exciting, and mind-boggling to enter the pitch knowing that I was competing for my country in a way, and the people who I was, my opponents and my teammates knew who I was and accepted that from me. They were like, yes, you are who you claim to be, and we are not going to ask you any further questions. This is just who you are, and you get to play the sport you love with people you respect as yourself. And I think that's the most important thing that Quidditch gave me. It gave me a language to understand myself and it gave me a community that made me feel accepted. And I think that's the big power of team sport. It gives you a place to be yourself and the opportunity to find people who will respect you for it. It also offers you people who will have your back no matter what. Because I know that if someone had had an issue with me, my teammates would have stood up for me. Um, sadly, I suffered an injury, a new injury that meant that I could no longer play Quidditch and I got to a new question. What am I going to do now? Am I going to return to Gorfal? Am I going to just pick up running where I left off? Because I also very much enjoyed that and I'm not too bad at it. But I did realize that I did want that team spirit back. Um, so I got to a, a point where I decided that I needed to find a new team. And it was quite, kind of difficult because I wasn't out in most of my life in the sense that I was just living as myself. But my transness was still there in the background, even when I was playing sports and I wouldn't be questioned on it because my passport says exactly who I am. It says male, it says my first, my second and my last name, and it's all correct. But my transness still plays a role in who I am in the way that I look. So I needed to figure out what I was going to do with that in relation to a new, new team that wasn't there when I transitioned because I didn't want to return to the club that I was at before because I felt like I would run into the same issues that I had sort of escaped by finding Quidditch. I would have to go through a period of being misgendered again because people still hadn't gotten used to the he him pronouns that I use and my name and they still could see this little girl in their head running around and I wasn't that. I wasn't that at the time and I wasn't that anymore and I didn't want to be confronted with that every time I went out to do the thing that I love to do. Um, there used to be some kind of guidance on trans athletes in Corfball, but when I was 11 or 12 it was taken down from the Federation's website and it never returned because I was 19 when I 
trying to find an, a new place in Kurpul and it wasn't there when I looked. Um, there was no guidance, the, the guidance that uh, the, the Dutch National Olympic Committee had was also kind of lacking. Um, so there was no real place to turn for support and the lack of education about trans issues within society, but specifically within sports clubs, just felt very isolating to me. I didn't, I knew that if I had to find a new place, I would have to educate everyone on trans stuff over and over again. And I had been doing that since I came out when I was 15 going on 16, because every time I came out to someone, I had to explain who I was and what that meant and how they had to adapt to that. And I was very tired of it. I was very tired of it because I had to deal with enough within myself um, without having to educate everyone around me. Um, and there was nothing in sports either. There was just bad stories in the news about trans athletes trying to compete as themselves, trying to do as well as they could, fighting not just for themselves, but also fighting for the people like them and just being told no time and time again because of old rules, because of misunderstandings. Um, and that was very daunting because the images that people have are actually partially from the media. Until someone in your actual life comes out to you, you have no idea what a trans person actually looks like. But many trans people look like me. Many trans people look like the um, New Zealand weightlifter, but some don't. Um, and again, it was very daunting and there was no guidance. Um, I was asked by a friend of mine to join a meeting with the Dutch Olympic Committee about trans people in sports. And during that meeting, a need for more guidance on trans athletes arose. Um, and then a year started where that guidance was drafted. All the things that I had issues with, like uniforms, but also at what level should I return to play? Because at the time I was just living as male, so that was okay. But had I stayed in Corfall while transitioning, would I have played as female for a while and then transitioned to male in the sport as well? Those were all questions that I was struggling with. I couldn't answer, but the guidance that is now drafted has some answers and definitely places to go for support if you, if and when you need it. Um, and the guidance is that starting point. It has a checklist of how to be an inclusive environment as a sports club. What are the rules of the Olympic Committee? What are the rules for, where could I find the rules for my sport and federation? Um, it, in, like I said, an inclusion checklist that you as a board member of a small grassroots sports club can look at and follow. Um, advice on leadership and policy, where to find education, um, how to adapt your sport to be more inclusive to gender diverse and sex diverse individuals. Um, also just some terminology. So the trans student that shows up at your sports club on your sports club's doorstep doesn't have to tell you everything, but you can go and read it yourself. Um, and that's what the guidance is now has now given. It's the starting point for all types of people involved in all levels of sports to look at and go, okay, so how can we be better? How can we be more inclusive? How can we cater to all athletes who come to our club and want to do this sport, who want to practice the sport that we love? How do we open us ourselves up to all athletes? And this is what the guidance gives. It gives a starting point to think about drafting your own rules and your own guidelines for your sports. Because what I need as a, someone who plays a team sport is different from someone who does fencing or someone who does running or triathlons or swimming. What I need as a team sport person is different from what someone who does gymnastics needs. And the guidance basically asks people, these are some ideas. These are things that could work for your sport if that is what your sport is open to. Um, now go and talk to trans people in your sport, people in your life, or just think about this yourself and make it specific for your sport. Show up for us. Um, 
and then you can be the safe haven that you hope to be and you can share this thing you love with everyone um and it's important to note that the guidance isn't static it will be improved with new suggestions from people who have ideas who can email the pe people who drafted the guidance and it can be corrected um but yes the guidance basically offers solutions to small problems or larger problems that trans athletes run into like i'm trans and i need to use a dressing room i'm you have a trans student a trans athlete who comes out and says hi i would like to remain on this team could i do that um you can turn to the guidance to find some ideas of how to deal with that situation and that is a very valuable starting point for all of us but we need everyone board members teammates uh people at sports clubs in general the media um just parents and and people who love sports to show up for us because we can't do it alone we're tired <laughs> um and we need you to help us uh, and i hope that this guidance can help you help us um and can be some inspiration for other countries and federations to find something that also works for them that also helps trans students in that country so thank you for paying attention to my story that was it for now and i also saw that in the chat a couple of links were posted um with rules of corfball and quidditch so you can get some idea of what those things entail uh, if you would like to have a closer look yourself hi matsunaka desu this is Matsunaka. Thank you very much uh, for your presentation, Emily's son. So from now on, Noguchi-san and Sugiyama-san, who have already talked to us, uh, should join us once again in this uh, talk session with Emrys, uh, which will be brief, unfortunately. But those two persons uh, are called, if you would just turn on the, um, yes, your screen, they'll be fine. Yes, I'm Matsunaka. Please allow us to raise some questions. First, one question from myself, Matsunaka. Yes, NOC guidance regarding that, apart from Emery's son, well, there are some, say, transgender personnel, apart from you, who were involved in this. Yeah, uh, the guidance there were a couple of people consulted for this guidance um partially some people that the people drafting the guidance knew like myself um but also transgender network netherlands which is uh a, basically a, it's an activist group that also offers media support and training to media outlets who want to talk to trans people um so they are basically a network combining knowledge about trans people with just trans people uh, themselves. So they looked at the guidance and had input from different, uh, both non-binary people and uh, just binary trans folk look at it. Uh, and because the guidance, what I forgot to mention is the guidance isn't just for gender diverse people, but also for sex diverse people. So people from the Dutch uh, NNID, which is the Dutch, intersex um, representative group also had a look at the guidance and gave input how to include intersex people in sports as well because they face some issues that are similar to what trans people go through but they also have some specific things that are slightly different from us um, so yeah i wasn't the only person a trans person involved uh, there were a couple of people consulted larger groups of people consulted Hi, Matsunaka. This is Emily. Once again, this is um, Matsunaka. Thank you very much, um, Emery's son. So, if that's okay with Sugiyama san, if you do have any questions um, for him, yes, 
After that, I'd like to sort of, um, you know, ask uh, Noguchi-san. Yes, uh, this is Sugiyama, I say, Emerson, thank you very much for your presentation. For instance, uh, psychological safety. Regarding that, I'd like to ask you about that. Now, you have this, um, say, guidance established, but transgender personnel's uh, psychological, say, reliefness or safety, for instance, have they changed? And then sort of uh, uh, how much of, say, for instance, influence have they had over them? Um, I hope I understand the question. Hi, I'm Emrys. Um, I hope I understand the question correctly. Um, in terms of mental health for trans folk in sports, the guidance should help a lot because it offer some of the ways in which support can be given to themselves, but also from the sport. So having support from a network of people you know from the sport that you practice um, should help with your mental well-being as well. Uh, and the guidance itself was also based off um, new insights in uh, what trans people need to feel safe and connected, uh, but also just generally facts about how trans people perform in sports. And that specifically pertains to the aspects of the guidance on elite sports, because it has a specific section on that as well. Um, so you have some idea of what, um, so the most recent scientific insight is used to ensure that everyone can participate at the level they're, uh, they're at and also uh, should be able and allowed to perform that. Hi, Matsunaka. This is Matsunaka, uh, Emerys, and also uh, Sugiya Matan. Thank you very much. So the last question I would like to entertain from Noguchi san. So Noguchi san, uh, question, please. This is Noguchi. So having guidance. So I think the top level uh, is uh, show the changes uh, thanks to guidance, but the lower level like a children youth level at the school and so forth. So uh, the participation uh, with the uh, gender uh, identification or are there any support for kids? So uh, how uh, they can uh, participate in the, in, in which category they can participate in sports? So any uh, cases in Netherlands, please. Yeah, so because the, the basic premise of the guidance is that everyone should be allowed and able to participate identifying with their own gender. So they, you have control over the gender you participate as. Uh, and that's what the guidance basically says and advises specifically where children are uh, concerned just let them play as the gender they identify as no for the questions asked no issues arisen just let them play um, and i know of trans kids um, and teenagers who are just doing that right now who uh, are just you know little trans boys and young trans girls who are on girls teams or boys teams or just just playing as their own gender um, and that's what the guidance advises uh, it also says that you might want to reconsider certain team placements depending on the phase in transition kids are in at that time but in principle and the, the basic premise remains you should be able to play as the gender you are um, so it's actually quite simple in that, and the guidance also advises that. Thank you. Uh, this is uh, Matsunaka. Thank uh, Emery san. Thank you for your answer, and Nobu san. Thank you for your question. So uh, actually, the session uh, started three minutes late, and uh, now uh, we are closing time. So uh, with regard to closing, uh, I thought that the Matsunaga was planning uh, to close the session, but uh, since we have Emery's, so, so to the participants, and also uh, this video, 
uh, will be available from uh, YouTube, so more people would have opportunity to see this session. And uh, among the such viewers, uh, there could be, there might be uh, transgenders and so forth. So any, uh, do you have any message to such people, please, as a concluding this session? I think mainly um, find people to support and support yourself, but also just in general, um, please show up for us. Please tell people you know who uh, might need it, which is pretty much everyone involved at a sports club, that this guidance exists. Um, it's on the NOSA NSF website, so you can just find the Dutch version at least there. Um, bring it to your board, the board members, bring it to your trainer and coach, bring it to their attention. Or if you have uh, a trans person in your life struggling who would like to join sports, also tell them about the guidance, because the more people know, the more safe the feeling of safety there will be. Um, so that's that's my main one. Show up for us and do that by disseminating this information and sharing the guidance. Hi, Matsunaka. This is Matsunaka. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Emerys. This is a really great uh, message. Thank you. I really, I'm really grateful having you. Thank you very much. So not only in the uh, Netherlands, uh, this guidance has to be shared in other countries, including Japan. And I hope that uh, that kind of a movement uh, will be uh, generated. I have one question. So the question uh, is that the, whether the guidance is available to everyone. So uh, I would like to check and I would like to come back to you whether this guidance is available. So uh, with this, uh, I would like to conclude the first session. And so uh, please uh, give a big round of applause to Emerys and Signosan uh, and also uh, Anoguchi-san. So I hope that Emerys will stay with us for the uh, second session. So without having any break, we would like to move into the second session. And with regard to the second session, uh, this was uh, decided to be held. Uh, and we have uh, Chris Mozier, and uh, Chris is an extremely important uh, person in uh, Olympic and uh, Paralympic uh, Games. And for the first time as an open trans uh, athlete, he uh, participated in the uh, uh, trials of the Olympic Games. So we would like to have a session with uh, Chris. So Chris, uh, please join us. I'm so glad, Chris, you were there. So right before this, so you were not there. So you are now in. I'm so glad to see you again. Because uh, you and myself actually sort of uh, met each other at the World uh, sort of uh, game in Miami back in, say, 2011, right? Uh, probably sort of LGBT. Um, Q is really prejudiced uh, in sports. So regardless of, um, for instance, sexual expressions, everyone should be able to participate in sports. And so this uh, World Out Games, uh, say held in, say, Miami, there was this session called Human Out Session, where, say, Chris and Ashley talked about, say, personal journey of yours, which really impressed me. So, would you mind actually introducing yourself first? Yes, thank you. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Chris Mosier. My pronouns are he and him. And I am a transgender athlete. Uh, I started off as a team sport athlete when I was a young person. And I moved into triathlon and duathlon as an adult. Uh, now a six-time member of Team USA in duathlon, which is not an Olympic sport, and triathlon in the sprint division. And I have had the pleasure of going to the Olympic trials in race walking last year. Uh, unfortunately, did not make the team. I pulled out of that race with an injury, but 
I'm very proud now to be on the verge of Tokyo 2020 with our first out transgender Olympian competing this year. This is Matsunaka once again. Thank you very much uh, for your introduction, Kristen. So regarding your personal say journey or history, if you would just spend about 15 minutes uh, for us uh, to be followed by myself, Matsunaka, Noguchi-san and Sugiyama-san for a brief session. Kristen, please start. Yes, absolutely. When I was a young person, I found myself really drawn to sports because it was a place where no matter how I felt I existed in the rest of the world, I could find some sort of community and friends through playing sports. So my earliest, mes my earliest memories of being a kid was being four years old, playing sports in the backyard with all the neighborhood kids. And it was the place where I felt the most accepted the most like I belonged. And for that reason was really the place where I poured myself into. And I found that because I was validated in sports in a way that I really wasn't validated as a gender non-conforming kid uh, in other spaces like the classroom or, or outside of the classroom, I really poured myself into sports. And so by high school, I became a three sport all conference athlete in volleyball, basketball, and softball. And when it came time to move into college and to pursue my dream of playing college sports, I decided not to because at that time, I didn't know the reason, but I didn't want to be on a women's team. I didn't know any trans people in real life. I had never met a transgender athlete before, and I didn't really even understand the word transgender as it applied to me. I just always sort of felt like myself. and. Sport was a, a space where I could be both gender neutral, so I could just be another athlete, but it was also a space that made me extremely hyper aware of the fact that people saw me as a girl because I was playing girls and women's sports. So in college, I did every co-ed sport that you could. I played uh, anything that didn't have to label me as a woman and that I could still play sports, but I found as I left college, I really missed that team environment. I missed the way that I felt being a competitive athlete. And um, I came back into running. And so running was something that I could do from my house. It was something that I could do by myself. And it was something that I could do with other people if I wanted to. Uh, I started to work my way up through running races and uh, found that I didn't want to go any longer than an ultra marathon. So <laughs> I bought a bike, I taught myself how to swim, and I became a triathlete. And it was really through sport that I realized my identity as a trans person, that in those races of, of um, having a result that I was proud of, of, of winning a race, for example, I was proud of that athletically, but I found that I couldn't share it with other people because it was in the women's category. And I didn't feel like a woman. And so I started to have this understanding of my gender identity through the lens of sport and how I was existing in the world. And sport really made me consider that I had to do something, that I had to transition. At the same time, I didn't see any out transgender athletes. And sport was such an important and essential part of my life that I was just terrified to lose that. So I waited over a year and a half after understanding that I'm trans. I waited over a year and a half before transitioning because I was trying to weigh my options within sport. And in 2010, I finally came out as a trans man. In 2015, made my first uh, US national team and uh, found myself challenging the International Olympic Committee policy on transgender athletes. Uh, which did not allow me to participate at that time. And uh, fortunately in 2015, the IOC rules were updated to allow my own participation and the participation of every transgender athlete after me who meets those requirements. And so since then, uh, I have been fighting for the inclusion of transgender athletes, uh, 
fighting for the visibility of transgender people in sports. And I am so incredibly proud that we are now in the position where we are going to see our first out transgender Olympians this Olympic Games and Paralympic Games. はい、えー、松中です。クリスさん、ありがとうございます。This is 松中。クリスさん、Thank you very much for telling us. You have just talked about your personal journey. So, Noguchi san and Sugiyama san, I trust them, they have some impressions、um, over what you have talked about. So, we'd like to actually ask them to join us for this、uh, brief session. On the screen,、uh, only four people. Can appear, but、um, this、um, person who will perform sign language、uh, is there as well. So I myself, uh, I myself would uh, actually um, actually leave、uh, this、uh, screen. So we'd、we'll、like to receive questions、uh, from those、um, two Sugiyama san and Naguchi san. Anyone first? Please raise your hand if you do have any questions. Are you giving me it? So, y a m s a n please go first. Kristen, hello. As for myself as well, this is the second time for me to see you.、Uh, back in Miami as well, with Van g o n I actually said hello to you because I'm an, a, a transgender athlete. But before, I didn't really have any opportunities to talk in person to any transgender athletes.、So、I was very pleased to see you then. So, in comparison with that time, you have a longer, say, mustache, right? But after coming out and before coming out, what kind of difference did you see or notice in your performance? Yeah, that's a great question. I definitely do have a longer mustache since the time we met. <laughs>、uh, you know, in terms of my own performance, what I noticed in terms of, of the change in performance before I came out versus after coming out, the most significant was my own sense of confidence. It was my own sense of being self assured in who I am. And,、uh, You know, I, you have to consider I was showing up to races and I was showing up in the world nervous about what people would say about me. And I was nervous about whether or not I'd be safe or if I would fit in with the people that I was around if they knew that I was trans,、uh, if they knew this truth about me. And when I could tell other people that truth and stand in my own power and own that myself, I took away all of the power from other people saying things. And th that to me, Really alleviated a lot of the nerves and the tension that I was feeling because I was going into spaces wondering if I stand a certain way, is somebody going to say something about my gender? Or if I say a certain thing or talk about a certain thing, is someone going to question who I am? And so for me to just say, I am an out, proud transgender man, I want to participate in men's sports, this is where I belong, my whole sense of self gained confidence and, and By a result of that, I could focus on my training. I could focus on my racing instead of focusing on all of those other things about being nervous about what people would think about me, being concerned about the policies, and all the things that were outside of my own control. Thank you very much. So,、uh, may I ask one more question? So,、uh, you boost your confidence and it actually、uh, made a positive impact on your、uh, performance. But if you did the coming out,、uh, many people asked about the coming out only. So, you are a transgender athlete over and over and over. I did the coming out and also I became the director of the JOC. And people asked whether are you a male a director or female director. So,、uh, people Ask about only the transgender. 
subject. So I am tired of that. So there are many more things that people have to look at, but people tend to focus on the transgender only. So how do you think about that? Do you have a similar experience? Yeah, I have a very similar experience. I, I knew as soon as I came out in 2010 that I would forever be the transgender athlete because there weren't many trans people in sports uh, and there were, I'm certainly not the first, but there was a big gap between, uh, between out trans people in the media in sports and, and myself in 2010. And so I um, had to shift my own perspective on this because I was nervous about people always assigning me as the transgender athlete. But when I was looking for a reflection of myself in sports before I came out, when I was looking for out transgender people in the media uh, being represented positively, and when I was looking for people who looked like me, I didn't see us in sports. And so I saw in 2010 a real opportunity to claim ownership of that title, to, to adopt that as part of my identity that I share with the world so that other trans people in sports can see a reflection of themselves uh, when I didn't see that myself. And so I was very intentional about saying I'm an out transgender person in sports. I'm an, an out trans athlete. Um, I even made a website called transathlete.com. <laughs> um, you know, because I want every athlete, every trans and non-binary person, and every cisgender person to see me in sports, to see me excelling, to see me playing with my peers, and to know that they can do that too. I want every young trans and non-binary person to know there is a place for them in sports, and that sports can be a, a space where we can thrive. はい、えー、クリスさんありがとうございます。では杉山さんありがとうございます。中、uh, Thank you, Chris. So,、uh, Noguchi さん、uh, do you have any question to Chris?、Uh, this is Noguchi.、Uh, very nice to meet you. So, I am、uh, Noguchi. I'm leading the athlete、uh, team in the、uh, Tokyo Proud House. And I have a question to you. So I、uh, will see、uh, requirements. Uh, you actually、uh, influence to change the requirements. So in the society,、uh, there are uh, the, there are a diversity of sex and also the gender in the society. But in the world of sports,、uh, there are only two options: men and women only. But what do you think in the future? So the diversified、uh, sex and also the gender identification, how the、uh, world of sports uh, will be uh, developed or evolved? So other than the men and、uh, women category. Yeah, you are absolutely right.、Uh, sport is so incredibly binary, which I think is the reason why so many trans people who love sports really struggle with coming out while they're still an athlete. Or we see athletes finish their athletic career and then decide to be their authentic selves in transition. And so, you know, with more and more people, at least in the United States, by statistics that I know of, identifying as non binary, so meaning something other than、uh, man or woman exclusively, you know, we're seeing more and more young people, more people in the LGBTQ community understand their gender identity. To be different than one of those two checkboxes that we see in sports. And so the world is going to have to change along with the people. And so, as we have more gender diversity, sports and our other institutions are going to have to reflect that. So, my hope is that we continue to see policies that meaningfully include transgender and non binary athletes at all levels of play. And that we celebrate those athletes when they, when they achieve those accomplishments.、Um, I think that Tokyo will be a real test to, to gauge where the world is in terms of acceptance of transgender people and specifically trans women in sports. And that we can consider how we will move forward from there because、uh, I am concerned about the way that the media will approach this, I'm concerned about the athletes' understanding. And at the same time, I see this moment、uh, being really, really critical for education of the entire world 
because the world is watching. You know, there's, there is no bigger stage for athletics than the Olympic Games. And we have this opportunity now to do some real meaningful education around trans inclusive policies and about trans inclusion and non-binary athlete inclusion in sport. So policies will have to change and update as we move forward. And what that actually looks like, I think is <laughs> remains to be seen, but I'm hopeful that as we become more inclusive at younger levels of play, that our elite levels of sport will also follow suit. Thank you very much. This is Noguchi. Thank you. Noguchi san, thank you very much for your question. This is Matsunaka. And also, uh, Chris, thank you very much for your answer. So, uh, Emerys, uh, you are on. So, Emerys, do you have any question? So, uh, Noguchi san, could you turn off your camera? And uh, Sugiyama san, and uh, Emerys, and uh, Chris. So U.S., Europe, Japan, transgender uh, uh, athletes are here today. So uh, I would like to entertain Emery's question. So uh, please, Emery. Hi. Um, yeah, first of all, I would like to say that it, it does matter, like the visibility that you bring and also the visibility that Tsukiyama brings is very important. It just, it means a lot. Uh, I'm a, a young trans person, relatively, I'm 22, um, and it just, yeah, it means the world to see that people are out there doing this and living, um, so thank you for that, both of you. Um, I do have a question for Chris. I would like to, I was wondering if you could change something about sports to make it more trans inclusive at this, right at this moment, and it just, it would just change now, what would it be? Interesting question. Uh, you know, I think that it would actually be more of the understanding of the fans, the perspective of the people outside of sports, because my personal experience within sports and, you know, understand that I'm framing this as a transgender man, right? And so as a trans man, I've received male privilege and I've also been accepted in, in men's sports um, without much issue. Whereas, you know, trans women, don't have that luxury of being accepted into women's sports in the same way. Uh, but, you know, athletes, coaches seem to love and appreciate me as an athlete and a coach and accept me as a teammate. Um, so the, the real thing that I would change if I could just change it like that would be people looking at trans athletes and acknowledging them as the person that they are, as the athlete that they are on the team that they are on as opposed to othering us or thinking that we don't belong there. So it would be more of a shift in the understanding of people to say, uh, trans man is a man and belongs on a men's team or a trans woman is a woman and there is a space for her on that women's team um, as opposed to thinking of us as anything other than uh, the people that we are. Thank you, I think that would, yeah, that makes perfect sense, <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much for your question and also Chris, thank you for your answer. So, uh, Emirates, could you uh, kindly turn off your uh, video? And uh, I would like to ask the uh, uh, final question from myself. Uh, Namatsunaka's question uh, is this. Uh, this is not a friendly question, but in US, so uh, there are uh, transgender athletes like you in the US, but depending on the state, uh, there is a strict laws or regulations which exclude a transgender athletes. So, so is there any specific action that you want to make to the society or uh, other than uh, athletes, so the people outside of the uh, sports. So if there are any uh, thing that they can do, so do you have any uh, advice or tips to such people to change the society? Yeah, I think that goes along with the answer to the last question that education is really important. And so there's a estimate in the United States, at least that 80% of 
people in the United States believe they have never met a trans person before. And if you've never met a trans person before, it becomes very easy to think of us as a myth, as a stereotype, as a caricature of the people that we are. And so, you know, for me, I think the, the number one thing that I could ask people to do, and specifically in the United States, but around the world, is to get a little more education about what it means to be transgender and some of the very basic issues about uh, what trans and non-binary people face within the world of sports. Um, because, you know, we've seen a record number of, of anti-trans sports bills this year in the United States. We've seen laws be passed now in multiple states this year that prevents trans kids like me from playing sports with their friends. And for any athlete, any person who's ever been involved in sports, no matter how you identify, you know that playing sports is an essential way that we connect to ourselves and that we connect to other people. And for any athlete, you know, myself included, I can't imagine who I would be without sports. And we need to make sure that young people have that opportunity to play with their peers. Um, and so again, I think that this goes to myth busting and uh, getting real facts because in this world of social media, it has been very easy to spread misinformation and to uh, speak in stereotypes. And so we need people to understand what it means to be transgender, understand why trans people play sports for the same reasons as anybody else, and that there are policies already in place that allow us to participate. So um, education will be the number one thing that anyone could do. This is Matsunaka again. Yes, education. As you say, yes, that is an important say aspect and a perspective I trust. Thank you very much for your say mentioning that. Well, it's just about to be the closing time for this session, but I would like to introduce you to just one question. Non-binary and trans and gender personnel, you know, to welcome those as a one step, maybe sports, uh, say, organizations and sports federations. In the case of um, their offering, say, sports events, say, re maybe recreations or, say, beginners and type of programs should be introduced first so that uh, they could offer uh, an easy access by anyone to sports, right? So would those um, people sort of uh, take that as a positive step or a, a dilemma? If uh, you have any sort of ideas on that, please, son. Yeah, I think if I understand the question correctly, how do non-binary folks fit into sports in recreational and beginner levels? Is that right? So I believe that all people should be able to access sports and, you know, sport has so many positive benefits for the participants uh, and, and the participants playing with other people, meeting diverse individuals that aren't like themselves. I know personally, I've made friends through sports that I would never have become friends with outside of my life because we probably just wouldn't have crossed paths. And so sport can be a real equalizer. It can be um, something that brings us together. And every person should have that opportunity to experience all of those benefits from sport, including the, the physical and mental and social and psychological benefits that we individually receive from playing sports. And so we need to think about ways that we can include people as opposed to blocking certain groups of people out of sports. Um, and this goes for all levels of play. At our youth levels, our recreational levels, and our beginner levels, you know, speaking outside of the Olympics, outside of the elite, elite athletes, we really need to be looking at open doors for all participants, you know, having athletes uh, be able to participate in the way that they identify, similar to the, the Dutch guidelines that we just heard about, and making sure that all athletes have access to sports. So we as league organizers, as team captains and coaches, as national governing bodies, we need to be looking for ways to include and in our policies and our practices should reflect that. Hi, Matsunaka desu. 
This is not Sunata once again. Thank you very much for your say, answer. Yes, exactly. Sports it does have a power which uh, should become something to be enjoyed by everyone. That is the way, right? So, Kristen, thank you very much for answering. So, NOC's uh, guidance um, has been mentioned. And concerning the question raised, uh, uh, there was an answer uh, given by the Embassy of the Kingdom of the Netherlands. According to them, so that there is no version available in English uh, yet. But when it um, say it's ready. Yes, I would like to receive an official answer from the embassy. Once again, thank you very much for say your remarks and participation. You, say in your case, Krista, you participated in the session very early in the morning, right? Thank you very much uh, for your participation. And so, as mentioned by Emily Sun, at the very say um, last uh, minute of uh, this first session and the Chris session, for those uh, people watching this, and for those who are going to watch this after this session, if you do have any message to be shared, uh, that would be great. Um, to try to actually sort of look at the camera because then uh, this um, video uh, may actually be utilized um, maybe later on some occasions. So. Sugiyama so, san and myself I should disappear with the Chris Sands message at the very last, the closing message. Uh, please say something. And before that, thank you very much for everything that have been given to us by the embassy. Thank you. Sports is a vehicle for social change and sports has the power to change the world. Uh, there is a space for all of us at sport. And so my message to anyone who is a member of the trans and non-binary community is to keep showing up, to continue to be your authentic self and play the sports that you love, because your visibility and your willingness to be your authentic self will help change not only your team and the environment that you are in, but also change the world of sports moving forward for every trans and non-binary person who comes after you. はい、え、松中です。クリスさん、本当に素敵なメッセージ、え、ありがとうございました。Thank you very much for your say sweet message. So with this, uh, we'd like to finish up uh, this session. So after this, uh, we would like to actually forward um, um some say messages sent to you. But thank you very much uh, for your time and participation. And Many thanks to the interpreters as well as to those um, who have performed, uh, say, sign languages. We are very much looking forward to being able to say enjoy sports together with you, Chris, and as well. Everyone, thank you very much for your time and attention. <laughs>